Denise. Denise, you're over here. Yeah, he took that. Um, who was, uh, that's yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and the, the video, if you haven't seen it, well, you know, of someone it. shares it with the potential daughter representing the Belmont yeah. briefcase. Yeah. Doing what the plans are. Are we, are we yeah. 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 about a month ago. Oh, oh, right. Right. I say to Eric that there's so much work in these videos that show it. Can we ask the commissioners to come up here, Murray? Could we ask the members of the public to find their seats, please? Where's the sign? It's in your honor. The chairman will decide. The, the, did you hear me? The chairman will decide. What? When, who seats where? Who decides? Okay. This is good. Okay. Are we ready uh, with the video stuff? Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Thursday, July 14th, 10 a.m. Nassau County Planning Commission meeting. It's good to be back in the chambers. I want to thank the landlord for uh, giving us new carpet to welcome us back here for our first meeting in um, almost three years. Uh, we start our meetings with the Pledge of Allegiance. I would ask Bill Nemo, who's rejoined us, and we're glad to have him back as uh, as a liaison with Nassau County DPW. Play ball, I always say. <laughs> so we, we have a number of procedural items to get through before we start the meeting. And when we uh, start the meeting, uh, those of the public, we haven't had the public comment in many years, you've got to fill out a speaker registration form. Staff, where are the forms? Raise your hand. They're over behind the cage there, um, behind Nick. And uh, fill out a form and bring it to the staff up front, and you'll be recognized when your time comes. Uh, we'll start with the roll call. Here. Commissioner Warren. Here. Commissioner Sakowicz. Here. Commissioner Kaladi. Excuse. Uh, Commissioner Gold. Here. Commissioner Foreman. Present. Commissioner Ellerby. Here. Commissioner Lewis. Here. Vice Chair Shapiro. Here. Acting Chair Greenfield. Present. We do have a quorum. Thank you very much, Don. Now, item A. Those that need an agenda, they're also in that area over there. You can pick up an agenda. Item uh, A2, we need an acknowledgement of receipt of the transcript of the June 16th, June 23rd NCPC hearing. Do I have a motion from the commissioner? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So traditionally, the next item on the agenda of new business would be an item that appears in January. We haven't been able to have a reorganization meeting in a long time because of the uh, Zoom situation. And we also have the uh, resignation departure of our uh, chairman and uh, at, at, I think, two meetings ago. And we have some new commissioners appointed by the current administration. Uh, is, you want to? No, 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 no. You, I'm just asking. Oh, okay. I thought you want to explain some legal. So at this time, we're going to have a nomination uh, for the chairman of the Nassau County Planning Commission. And it's my distinct honor and pleasure to nominate a friend and a colleague who I worked closely with during my whole tenure, 19 years, how many? Uh, that I'm here. He's the only one with more seniority than me, 23 years appointed by former County Executive Galata, the only one with more institutional memory than me. So it's my pleasure to nominate uh, Len Shapiro as the chairman of the Nassau County Planning Commission. I'll second the nomination of Commissioner Shapiro for chair. 
So we have a motion second. All those in favor, so aye. signify by saying aye. 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 Councillor, do we need a roll call vote? I don't have a gavel to turn over to the microphone to, um, or, and, and in the pre-meeting, I was told if I don't chair, the meetings will be a half hour quicker, which is good, because I have a plane to Florida to visit my daughter later today. So, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody here. It's been a long time since we've been back in these chambers. It's nice to see we do have public, uh, everybody from the public here today. I'd like to welcome our new commissioners. Um, it's an experience, and I'm doing it 23 plus years, and it's quite fascinating how you can really make a difference in Nassau County, and it's a pleasure to work with all of you. So, staff, um, can we please call the first case? Ah, sorry about that. All right, so do I have a motion to amend the uh, calendar as uh, stated in our um, papers? So I make a motion to amend the calendar for the benefit of the record and the public. What we're amending is when we went on Zoom, we were not permitted to vote at the meeting and we had to have a second meeting for voting because the Zoom didn't allow interactive participation and we would have to take written comments. Now that the public is here, and the former chair, former acting chair, always liked members of the public here, we're eliminating all those second meetings, hence saving the county money. So that's, that's my uh, motion on this. Do, do we, we have a second? Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, John, now we can do it. Okay. All right. Uh, first case is Ospec filed. Hold on. Well, it's on top there. Do we have a 16-year-old kid in the audience that can help the commissioner with the <laughs> monitor? I just have one question. How come I don't get a monitor? Because <laughs> you see the chairman, he, uh, he doesn't like monitors, I guess. We, they're saving money, every other person. <laughs> Ask the landlord. I think the landlord's here. Do you have good eyesight? Right. It's even better now. Okay. Reed, is yours on? Yeah. Okay. First case is OSPEC file 2 of 2022. This is a disposition. The property is located at Incorporated Village of Great Neck. Stormwater Basin 200 and Wood Road, Great Neck, New York, 11024, Section 1, Block 129, Lot 431. Uh, Nassau County is requesting to transfer this subject property to the Great Neck Park District. Uh, this was introduced in our to the OSPAC, May, May 11th and June 8th of 2022. We had public hearings. Virtually June 16th and 23rd, OSPEC at their uh, meeting last night approved the transfer to zero without commission yesterday evening and is now here today for a recommendation, a uh, secret recommendation and vote by the Nassau County Planning Commission. Here today we have representatives from Nassau County Real Estate. Uh, good morning, Commissioners. Uh, Kevin Walsh from the Office of Real Estate Services. I'm joined by my counsel from Deputy County Attorney Anna Garrison, who's been working on this matter. This is a transfer of a vacant county lot uh, that is technically a, a storm basin, but not a formal basin, to the Great Neck Park District. Uh, the transfer will be restricted to passive park purposes, um, gathering. There will be some benches and some walking trails. Um, this. Uh, Use will be open to all residents of Nassau County. Thank any you. questions? Commissioners, any questions? Well, from a real estate perspective, um, you, you've uh, done transfers between other municipalities in the past. You want to just speak to that? It's been a while, but there was uh, a number of them that came before this commission that involved. Um, the general idea that the county wanted to give some of the smaller parks to like the town of North Hempstead, for example, and uh, we had a similar kind of condition that was placed on it saying it would still be open to all county residents since it was originally a county.
county owned park where you were going to transfer can you just speak to yeah the that, that's correct we have transferred some parks uh, in the past you, you're correct to town North Hempstead many of them I did I'm gonna say late 2000s 2010 um, those a little more involved because when there it is a park uh, may raises sometimes alienation issues this particular piece has never been used for county park purposes is literally a vacant kind of a drainage swampy area um, I think a lot of this property uh, is impacted by wetlands so anything that's designed in the, the park jurisdiction to wear this with the maps will have to work with you know obviously the environmental nature of the property um, but this will be open to all members of the public uh, to, to use it, it's adjacent to uh, what's called the Parkwood facility I believe in Gray Neck there's a tennis facility next door and a pool complex on the other side um, but this is uh, outdoor passive recreational space <laughs> thank you so I think we should um, ask I think this would be a good time just to ask our um, DPW uh, what was the title Jeff gave you? You're, you're our interplay for DPW, our representative from DPW. Actually, I'm Deputy Commissioner, and you're responsible for the staff here for the Planning Commission. Yeah. So can you, can you explain to the, uh, to the, put into the record, you don't have a concern about this, no, uh, this? This was a drainage reserve area. Technically, it was a stormwater basin, but it was not built to county specifications for a stormwater basin, therefore it was not fenced off and, and uh, protected. It was kind of left as open space, but it did function as stormwater basin, but for village of Great Neck water only. It doesn't take water off a county road. When we own a basin that doesn't take water off a county road, we really don't need to maintain it or, or own it for any purposes. We prefer if they go to the village of the local municipality. So they're taking this swampy area and going to make it nice. <laughs> Simply said. Is there anybody from the public that wishes to be heard? No. Public comment period closed. That's correct. Sorry about that, John. We're a little rusty. <laughs> uh, not seeing any, I'll take a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion on OSPAC file number two of 2002. 2022. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, and the motion is to. Uh, uh, for first under secret to uh, classify the action as unlisted and adopt the negative declaration and recommend to the Nassau County Legislature that they approve the disposition of the property uh, to the incorporated village of Great Neck. Uh, thank you. Second. Great Neck Park District. It's not Park. the village. Yep. It's in the Great Neck Park District to be specific. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Commissioners, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next case is major finals, uh, excuse me, major subdivision final map application for NCPC file number 2002 F2, map of campus estates property at Woodmere, town of Hempstead, 336 Woodmere Boulevard, North Woodmere, New York, 11598, section 39, block 127, lot 7. On the agenda, it is listed as lots 3 and part of 2. When the original application came in, those were the lot numbers. Since then, there was a minor subdivision that was approved by the commission, so the new lot number is 7. Uh, this was properly noticed. Um, just wanted to explain why that those numbers are on the agenda. Don, uh, yes. um, the NCPC file number, as it appears on our paperwork, says 2002-P-2, and you said F? Yes, this is F. Um, that was a typo. Okay. It is not P. Sorry about that. Uh, this application received preliminary subdivision approval on February 3rd of 2022 and is now seeking final subdivision approval of a 2.69 acre horseshoe shaped parcel into 17 single family residential lots. To make way for this development, existing structures including two pools, bathhouse, tennis courts, sheds, and basketball courts would need to be demolished. 
The property is located in the hamlet of Woodmere, town of Hempstead, and not within 300 feet of incorporated village or city. Subject property is surrounded by residential units to the north, east, and west, and the Lawrence Woodmere Academy to the south. The development is located in the New York American Water District, the County of Nassau Sanitary Sewer District, and in the Hewlett Woodmere Number 14 School District. The development's nearest bus routes is and excuse me, nearest bus route is the N31, which runs along West Broadway and is closest to the Woodmere Long Island Railroad Station. Nassau County Department of Public Works approved and signed the final subdivision map and engineering plans. Uh, last night, the Nassau County Health Department issued their realty subdivision approval and also signed the final map. The town of Hempstead also approved the subdivision map and engineering plans. The county will require a performance bond to ensure all public improvements of this development are installed correctly. Those numbers are as follows. Inspection fee of 42000 $60.22, cash escrow of $12,515.05, and a bond of $337,986.75. I think that is it. Here today is Christian Brown to speak on behalf of his applicants. Mr. Chairman, for the record, Jeff Greenfield recusing himself on this case, file the paperwork with the attorney. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Christian Brown, McLaughlin and Stern, 1122 Franklin Avenue, Garden City. Thank you, Mr. Paracas. He's given you the overview of this application. You probably remember this from back in February when you issued preliminary approval. This is a parcel that's being, well, has already been split off from the Lawrence Woodmere Academy. And this would be the completion of the process whereby the, uh, this, uh, field area uh, that belongs to the Lawrence Woodmere Academy would be redeveloped with the 17 homes on all on zoning compliant lots, all on existing uh, town roads, well, town and some would be on uh, West Broadway, which is a county road, but there won't be any need to install uh, new roads. Everything will be, uh, all the infrastructure will be connected to existing town and county infrastructure. As Mr. Prakas noted, uh, DPW and all of its subdivisions have signed the map. The health department has signed the map. We have the conditions in place. Uh, and we're very pleased to be at this point, and it's a critical point uh, for, really for the Lawrence Woodmere Academy because uh, uh, it's, the school has been in a difficult financial position. And if you uh, approve this today and allow us to move forward to file the map, the sale of these lots will will greatly uh, assist the school in, in in its you know plan for reorganization and hopefully uh, future survival. So, on behalf of my client, um, who's the developer, we're pleased to be here, and I think I can speak for the school as well, uh, in that uh, we're looking forward to getting to a closing table, hopefully in the next few weeks, and getting the school um, the cash it needs to uh, resolve some of its issues and, and move forward. So, um, again. Um, there will be some open space preserved in the horseshoe that will remain with the school. The homes will ring that open space all on existing roadways. Uh, the infrastructure will be hooked into the existing infrastructure and all the homes and the lots comply with the town's zoning requirements. So unless you have any further questions, I'll close subject to public comment. Um, Mr. Brown, we have a number of speakers. Also, if I can ask, is your client here with you today? Yes, one of the representatives of my client is here. Um, at this point, let me just call up the people that have sure. uh, asked to speak, and we will ask you to come back up and um, answer their questions. Sylvia Brown? Yeah. Name and address for the record? Sylvia Brown, 928 Greenfield Road, Woodmere, Cad Woodmere New York, 11598. I'm very impressed with what he spoke about, and as I stand here, I realize that the committee should have asked for more information as to the soil content and other environmental issues. Perhaps the project would never have begun. Okay. I told you my name. I purchased and moved into 
my house at 928 Greenfield Road in Woodmere exactly 45 years today. The house was empty and we began settling in. I had heard when I had moved in that a son who had lived at the house had been diagnosed with cancer and that a son at the neighboring house had died from the disease. My son Michael last year was diagnosed with brain cancer. Although doctors at three hospitals tried to come up with a family source or a history of Michael's illnesses, nothing appeared to answer the diagnosis. Recently, you may know that 100 people with connections to a school where all were diagnosed with brain cancer throughout a number of years. I started to think about how the Woodmere Academy years ago was constantly spraying and dusting the fields to the point that I had to close the windows facing the school. In later years, what they were using was banned. Today, I have concerns that the clearing of the fields is bringing up contaminants that have been long buried. I urge vigilance in allowing this project to continue. I would also like a survey of whether the spraying and dusting has led to other health risks. I wish you would think carefully before you decide that this is a viable thing that we're saying. Think about the people, never mind the money involved with a project like this. We care, you should care too. Thank you. Thank you. I forgot, uh, we did receive a comment uh, via email yesterday. I'm just gonna read it into the record real quick. It's dated July 13th, 2022, signed by Rabe and Mrs. Yonatan Levin and family. To Nassau County Planning Committee, we strongly urge you not to allow the sale and construction project of campus estates in the homes across the street. There are so many obvious reasons and there are other reasons as well. Please consider all of the following points. Obvious reasons to consider, number one, Please realize that the certified letters from campus estates were sent out and the timing was very short and not nearly everyone received a letter. Also with very short notice, so many of us were not able to change our work schedules and to attend the meeting. That is, to make, that is the main reason you will not receive many comments. There are many families currently away and out of town. That was wrong, deceitful, and dishonest. Number two, the street of Greenfield Road is extremely narrow. There's no room for two-way traffic between cars, school buses, landscaping trucks, town garbage trucks, etc. We frequently witness congestion and backlog. We have an understanding amongst the neighbors not to park on the opposite side of the street because it is almost impossible for one car to pass, let alone two cars. Number three, there are many children living on the block and increasing cars would increase danger. Number four, community cannot hold any more traffic The congestion is bad enough already between morning bus commutes, cars, etc. Five, the sense of land and greenery add to the beauty of this community. There is something to be said for having a beautiful school and a beautiful yard in the community. Housing is not an answer for this property. We need land. Other important reasons to consider. Number one, the areas surrounding the property are in a flood zone and some borderline the flood zone. Another, nevertheless, there are high water tables in the area for sure additional addis housing would increase the water and cause increased flooding issues. Canadian, number two, Canadian geese in large numbers stay on the field and return many times throughout the year, the high water tables and attraction <coughs> to them. Number three, the storm water, I'm sorry, the storm drain on Woodmere Boulevard and Greenfield Road is in no way sufficient to care for increased housing. It oftentimes floods over, the, over and always gets clogged. It is insufficient. Please consider these important points. Campus Estates has one agenda only, and that is to make money. The neighborhood and community are not of concern, and we, the current residents, urge you to protect us, the residents of your jurisdiction, with much appreciation for everything that you do to serve the community. Signed, Rabbi and Mrs. Jan, Natan, Levin, and family. John, yes. before you go, uh, was it, were all the notices sent out in accordance with our regulations? Yes. All right, if I can now ask uh, Rifka Kreisman to please come up. Hi. 
Good morning. Name and address morning. for the record, uh, please. Rivka Crixman, 365 Woodman Boulevard. I live right by third base, like right across the street. I see the baseball field. Um, I didn't know I was coming today. I was upstate. I go for the summer with my family. Um, and I had to come back for work on Tuesday for something. And when I came home, I saw tractors and piles of dirt. It looked like I had a mountain in front of my house. But you can see, I'm sure you'll see pictures. They have pictures of what they dug up the earth, the earth and whatever. Um, I thought maybe the school was putting in a pool. I didn't know what they were doing. I had no idea. Um, my neighbor saw my car, so she called me, and she's like, she spoke to somebody outside. She's like, what's going on? Um, that's how we discovered something's happening. Um, so rumors and nothing really, nobody really knew what was happening. And last night, I got um, a ring on my doorbell, and it was the mailman, and that's when I signed my, um, that I got a letter. Um, we never got a letter before. None of the neighbors ever got a letter. Nobody had any notice. Um, so I'm not really prepared with anything. I could show you pictures in front of my house, how there's oh, every morning when there's school, um, there's actually two schools right there. There's the academy and there's OHEL. It's like a special ed school. Um, and they don't have places for their buses to park, so they park in front of us every single morning. Their bus is idle. They don't, you know, the children are sitting there uh, in the bus. Parents probably don't even know, but they're idling and they don't want to turn off the, the engines. So you feel the smell of the buses or whatever for about an hour every morning and every afternoon they're waiting for the children to finish and they're all sitting there. So I can't imagine having 17 homes, at least every home will have one car, maybe two, so you have 17 times two, that's another, how, much, how many, 34 cars plus these buses and this road happens to be, it's like the only road that brings you from West Broadway to Peninsula like straight on, you don't have to go through little streets. So a lot of cars go there. And if Peninsula is closed off for some reason, there's an accident, then everybody comes down Woodman Boulevard and there's usually a lot of traffic and just stand still to get to the next West Broadway. There's only like four main little streets that they can go across Long Island. So that alone, that, that's, the last, that's the only thing I could bring up right now because I'm really not like, I wasn't really prepared for this and I can't think about different things that will impact you know, in the environment or whatever, because I literally just got this five o'clock last night, this letter and all the rumors. Think, I don't even know what's, now I know what's gonna be here, but there were all kinds of stories going around. So that's top of my head. Um, in front of my house, on the corner, I live on the corner of Eaton Road and Woodman Boulevard, so facing the baseball field, every time it rains, even a little rain, we have a lake on the corner. So if I wanna get to my driveway, which I'm on a corner, my ladder's on a corner, my driver is behind me. I have to go around the block to not get stuck in that water. So I don't know what they're, you know, what they're thinking to add more, more buildings, more houses. Like if they're going to fix these problems, you know, that's something that they should really consider. Um, Thank you, <laughs> Mr. Brown. Can, what? Can you um, you provided the notices to staff? My office actually didn't do the noticing. The applicant did the noticing in conjunction with Mr. Paracas. I, I am assured that everything was uh, John, done everything timely. Done. Yeah, uh, so the noticing requirements for final subdivision approval is everybody has to be noticed within 200 feet of the subject property via certified mail at least seven days prior to the meeting. That, was ha that happened last Thursday. Um, I have all the read I have all the receipts that they were mailed out. Uh, unfortunately, our charter doesn't require the letters to be picked up; just needs to be sent as well. They also have to notice it with in uh, publish it in Newsday, and it was published this past Sunday's Newsday. And so the commission is aware it's the, it's the actual mailing of the notice, not the receipt of the notice that is set by the charter. And, and you know, the charter sets the rules. We, we can't say that the uh, charter is unfair. It should be more noticed. Th those are the rules set by the, uh, the ledge through the, the county charter. How is, is it certified or is it just regular mail? It's certified. Certified. C certified. Okay. Which, again, this happens often. Certified people have to be there. So sometimes they don't get it right away or pe there has to, you know, people have to come back 
several times before there's someone home to sign for it. Some people won't sign for certified mail. So that's a right. And that's the requirement. So. And to add to what Mr. Brown is saying, sometimes with certified, if you're not home, they would leave a pink slip, and you'd actually have to go stand in line at a post office during normal business hours. The, the system is not exactly the best system, but it is the law. Okay, Mr. Brown, can you yes. speak to um, work that has already started on the property? That's, that's remediation work um, required by the health department prior to coming here. Um, it's not construction work, and to the environmental concerns raised, um, the applicant is spending a significant amount of money um, to remediate the property to the standards required by the Department of Health. Um, I, some of that remediation is caused, I, I believe, by you know the treatment of the lawn and so forth that had gone over, on over the years. So that soil has to be taken off and uh, disposed of properly. That has occurred. The remediation is completed. Uh, the health, that's why the health department signed the, uh, the Mylar maps. So actually a, a benefit to, if, if nothing ever happened here or, or if uh, somebody built two houses, there would be no environmental cleanup whatsoever required. But because this is a major subdivision of this size, the health department requires a substantial amount of environmental remediation that's above and beyond what anybody would do in, in a sort of a normal construction project to just build a new house. So this field area is going to be cleaner than it ever was and that, that's what's going on there now, or what has just been completed. What you see there is the, the uh, excavation work that was necessary to, to, to grade off the soil and take it out, and so, so, so it, it's clean. That's a very helpful response to the point raised about the long-term use of lawn pesticides at the site. Um, there was also a concern raised about stormwater um, runoff that the area uh, has uh, been plagued by flooding in the past. Um, the plans that we're approving here today include drainage uh, systems to control stormwater runoff. So can you speak to that concern? Yes, there's a separate grading and drainage plan that goes along with the subdivision map that has to be signed off by both Nassau County Department of Public Works and by the Town of Hempstead and the Health Department. Um, so uh, these homes will uh, meet all of the drainage requirements I, and I, I, I believe that um, um, in the er, at the preliminary stage there were some questions raised about that storm drain I think it was just a matter of making sure it was cleaned out and I I believe that that my client you know did cl cleaned it out at, at some point uh, in the in the in the recent past and, and as we continue, could could I just ask the staff to bring up the mylar? Do we have the signature from the health department? Can we can you can we just visually um, confirm that while this hearing continues? And, and also, um, the standards that you were being held to are clean up uh, to residential standards. Uh, I, I at least yes, I I, I I I believe that's what the. I'm not sure if the health department uses that term, but I can assure you. DCS. Just in lay ter in layman's terms, they the health department is quite conservative in what it approves for uh, these types of subdivisions. So, a site that again, if you bought a a single lot and wanted to develop, you know, one house, you would never hear about this. But because of this process, um, you know, if the health department detects use of fertilizers, for example, that have been common fertilizers that have been used over the years on, on a lawn that's now being developed, like here, all of that, all of that soil that's been subject to those treatments over the years has to be removed. So one benefit of doing a major subdivision of more than five lots is you're getting a, a pretty substantial um, environmental remediation that you would not get if somebody built one house or four houses. Excuse me. Has the balance of the property been remediated as well, or is just the 17 lots that are the subject of this morning's discussion? Because it seems to me that uh, cleaning 17 lots while leaving the, uh, the the center of the horseshoe plus the rest of the lawns, which were heavily treated, is just inviting a development to be uh, adjacent to tainted soils. So I'd just like some further clarification as to w what exactly is the area that's been remediated. The area that's been remediated is only the subject property. The, the rest of the school is not part of the project, and so it's not, there would, 
my client, who's the contract vendee and developer, wouldn't be in a position to remediate the entire campus, you know, campus of the Lawrence Woodmere Academy. The only, excuse me, the only thing is, is that depending upon where the gradient flow is, will depend upon who's going to be responsible for that cleanup. Yeah, it's not that simple. Well, as I said, this is a, a large portion of the property that's being developed, redeveloped with homes. So the remediation has been completed on that portion of the property. One moment. Obviously, if that if the remainder of any portion of the remainder, somebody were to seek to develop that in the future, it would be subject to the same requirements, quite likely, that, that this project was subject to. Is there, if there's nothing further, I'll yield no, to I'm the public. I'm going to continue on with the rest of the speakers. Okay, thank you. Uh, Theodore Spiegel. My name is Theodore Spiegel. I'm a neighbor at uh, 369 Woodmere Boulevard across the street, and uh, I'd like to speak to the uh, life safety issues, the threat to life safety issues. If you look at the narrowness of Westwood and the narrowness of Greenfield, when there's an ambulance or some police or emergency, or uh, I, I came today to say I didn't want it on my head that if a kid was on a bike or something, uh, might get injured. So there's a lot of children playing there. And uh, I wish the developer well. Uh, I hope the school finds more money somewhere. Uh, but I don't think this is a way to, to save a school. Uh, I wanted to go to the procedure of, I got a knock on the door late yesterday, about 6 or 7 o'clock on... Um, signing a receipt so I, I understand the law is to send it out but um, I just got it uh, late last night to to uh, to speak about that the environmental issue I, I didn't realize the neighbor uh, had known about so many things I don't know if I would have moved in um, but if there's something in the soil and you mentioned the gradient if if, the, if it rains, will that chemical leach into the new neighbors that are buying new houses? And uh, I remember we almost moved into Oxford Street, and somebody said, uh, they were just standing there. We were looking, shopping around with a broker, and uh, they said, don't live here. It was, it was close to where the 7-Eleven is on Rockaway and uh, Peninsula, so we definitely didn't move there. Um, as far as remediation, what I saw from my second floor window, I can see that the tractor's coming. They, they build up the grass. I don't know if it was how many inches of, of soil, but they put it in a pile and they put a, a white top over the top. So I don't know if that's called remediation. I think they were just checking perhaps to get a sample. I don't know. But um, it's, uh, I'd say, mostly the life safety. Um, the other question was um, about 15 years ago, I'm not sure the exact date, we were told that someone else tried to develop something and that someone got a hold of an environmental attorney that said that the birds that land there are um, an endangered species. I called the South Shore Audubon Society. They said, good luck. Um, so uh, the traffic, though, is, is phenomenal. And uh, I, I don't think it's not to be selfish and say I don't want neighbors. I always welcome it, neighbors and strangers, but um, it's, I don't think it's the same place to put uh, that much more. I think behind me, uh, just uh, west of Woodmere Boulevard, there's one block called Yale Avenue, and there's somebody building a house that's an entire block wide. And about two years ago, they struck water and it took an entire year for the water to drain out into a sewer. And uh, so I think it's going to be difficult. Um, 
perhaps not put a basement, maybe, I don't know, but I'd rather see if this could be, uh, this, this could possibly be tabled. And uh, again, the health issues, but just as the traffic getting uh, an ambulance, uh, uh, a, a town ambulance, a hotel ambulance, uh, police or fire or, or sanitation through uh, the threat to life safety is a, uh, it's, it's too narrow. Mr. And, Spiegel. Uh, I don't you, know if that's. You, you're on repeats actually, so there's other speakers. I'd like to let Sorry, them. Sorry, yes. Okay, this was my wife's list. Thank so you. So I'm gonna just cut it short and uh, let you know that uh, I think they should uh, give the deposit back and uh, find another way to save the school. Thank you very much. You're Wish welcome. you well. Stuart Bluestone. Can we just ask one question before? Was there a soil sample taken of this property? I mean, what, 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 is there any kind of environmental report that we have? We're talking so much about the soil. Is there anything that we can? Mr. Brown, do you want to just step up for a second and answer? I'm asking Mr. Brown. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's part of the health department process. There are many, many samples taken, and they're analyzed through a lab at the expense of the applicant. Those results are then reviewed by the Department of Health, and the remediation plan is then developed based upon uh, the soil samples and the levels that are returned um, within those various samples. A, a remediation plan is proposed by the applicant's consultant, it's approved by the Department of Health. The applicant then has to carry out the remediation plan under the Department of Health's auspices, come back to the department, show that the samples are now clean or acceptable levels, show that the contaminated material has been removed and appropriately removed to correct facilities, and then the Department of Health, you know, closes out the job and signs off on the plan, and uh, they will not sign the Mylar map until that process has been completed. And, and, and to follow that point, that's why I asked to see the Mylar now that we're here in, in uh, person and can, can do that. And it does have the signature of the, um, from the Department of Health, the commissioner. It's dated July 13th of, of this year. So it's just, uh, um, so that, that's the point, that, that there is a very much an extensive process. The, land is now remediated and ready for whether or not we'll approve this development. And it is, I have to say, it is a exhaustive process. It's very expensive and it, it is uh, um, a, a big component of what goes into having a subdivision approved in Nassau County. So uh, I'm not complaining, I'm just saying the, the applicants and so forth, they are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to bring these sites to, you know, a, a very, substantial level of cleanliness, which again, would not be required with other forms of development. For example, if you just built an apartment building here, let's say you just did a minor subdivision and you built an apartment building, there's no involvement in the Department of Health because you're not doing a major subdivision. So it only kicks in in certain instances, um, and this is one of them, so that is a benefit, I think, to, to the community. Okay, thank you. Wait, can I ask that? Um, Brown. Oh, yeah. um, with regards to the, the, the water issue, um, are these houses being built with basements? I don't, if it's, any house in the flood zone will not be built with a basement. I don't know if they're all in the flood zone. Okay. I don't know what the final construction plans for the houses would be, but any house in the flood zone would not be permitted to have a basement. On the flood point, our requirements are five inches of water retained on site. So, so we do have that as part of the design the, that's been approved. Right. The, because this is a major subdivision within the jurisdiction of the Planning Commission and County DPW, county standards apply to the entire project uh, and trump the town standards, which are generally lower than the county standards. And people should understand that an open field does uh, help with absorbing water, yes. but 
in truth, when you do a development like this, with that requirement being met of the five, in that is actually going to reduce the problem of stormwater right. substantially that right. the neighbors have experienced. Right. So These are o older areas. These homes and the school were built with no drainage provisions whatsoever. So, so you're you know, raising the, the levels uh, quite a bit. So the points that the neighbors are raising are all important points, but. The good news is the project is going to improve on each of these things. We remediated the contaminated site from the parts that are being developed, and that's been signed off by the health department after that extensive process. There's going to be stormwater retained on site five inches as required by, and there's no waiving, no reducing of that standard. That's a high standard that you're going to be meeting there. Um, by the way, the idling buses point that was raised, there is a state law. It's illegal to idle buses more than five minutes, so people should call the police if, if someone's idling buses with children in them for long periods of time. Um, you know, and then the Canada geese. There are, the best solution for Canada geese is the fake dogs that you put out in the field that have a little bit of uh, movement to them. Um, so, you know, th these are all valid issues, but the point should be made that the development is actually going to make improvements on the key questions that have been raised about contamination on the site and about stormwater control. Right. I would just add that in a project like this that complies with the zoning regulations, the applicant's burden is essentially to satisfy all of the engineering and health requirements that permit the proposed development to go forward. But if you do satisfy those requirements, then, you know, the project is is deemed, you know, to be, to be it, it should also be pointed out on the question of traffic. So, you know, there's a movement called uh, Vision Zero. So there's a real effort to put, to get stricter on traffic. So I agree with everybody that complains that we have to do something about people speeding on, on residential roads and, and roads in general. Um, but, you know, when you have a, a street that has a field to the side of it, it may actually encourage people to be driving faster. This block will be just like any other residential block where there's homes on both sides that are the exact same property sides you know, right. in terms of boundaries of the property. So there's no inherent reason to think that this road should be any more car dangerous than any of the other residential roads that will look just like it. I would agree. And I mean, the, the, the fact is that if, if Lawrence Woodmere Academy goes away or, or continues to you know, reduce its footprint, some development will take place there, uh, whether that's single-family homes or multi-family development proposed. Um, it, it will bring, you know, there will be some impact. And so th there's no guarantee. In fact, it's a rather dicey proposition, I think, that there will always be a Lawrence Wood Woodmere Academy there. And this development, again, complies with zoning. It's single-family homes. The, the traffic engineers, I think, would say that's the, about the, the least impactful use you can get for um, you know this amount of property because single family homes of this number wouldn't be considered you know a major um, driver of traffic it's 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 the the change in the number of trips and so forth is deemed incremental it's anecdotal whatever very minor as opposed to say taking this lot and saying you want to put you know an apartment building on it so it, it, what I'm just trying to get at is it's not a the question is not whether you should have these homes or keep the Lawrence Woodmere Academy forever. It's the question is really what is going to replace at least part of the of the former footprint of the school. Thank you. Thank you. Name and address for the record, please. My name's Stuart Bluestone. I'm at 373 Woodmere Boulevard uh, in Woodmere. I've been there for 43 years. Virtually all the homes that have been built are older homes, probably uh, between 80 and 100 years old. We all have basements. We all have sump pumps in the basement. The water table is extremely high. I'm not satisfied that the building of 17 homes, and I don't know that uh, I believe we are in a flood zone, but I also know that two recent constructions on Yale Avenue did have basements. And the previous speaker spoke about how long it took to pump the water out. I'm concerned 
that this construction will raise the water table, not lower it. Uh, I'm also concerned about the traffic. Uh, the traffic now is horrible. I live midpoint in the block, directly across from the playing fields that are being uh, sold. There are times in the morning between, I'd say, quarter to eight and nine, nine fifteen, I can't get out of my driveway because of the traffic backed up going south to the light on Woodmere Boulevard. Buses trying to get into Hask and into Woodmere, uh, Lawrence Woodmere Academy. It's impossible. Adding more traffic, adding more cars to that mix will make it intolerable. Someone else mentioned how narrow Greenfield and Westwood are. They shouldn't even be two-way streets. It's dangerous. So I'm very concerned not only about the safety issue, the traffic issue, the water table issue. Uh, I certainly would like an engineer's report on the water table issue. Uh, also, it should be noted that Woodmere Boulevard is an evacuation route. And adding, adding potentially more traffic to that route is an inherent danger, and that should be considered. I'd like to yield back to Brown. We will let, we will let you come back up at the end. Can I? Okay. Um, I, um, you know, I feel your pain and, and all of that, but when you do move by a school, you do have to expect there to be buses and traffic and all. And I did serve on a board of a private school and there were issues, you know, um, in terms of traffic on a road and I really think that that's something that Lawrence Academy that the community should try to work with them in order to try to really reformulate how the buses are coming in maybe they have to do something the buses are not from Woodmere Academy they're but primarily it from Hask which but it, was not there when we moved but it there's only one entrance there but maybe they have to work on reconfiguring how traffic comes in because I mean especially during COVID you have you know people driving their kids to school instead of taking the buses I mean it's just a lot more congestion I mean I know for myself you know there was never like buses lined up in Syosset along the street you can't even get through but it's because there's so much more congestion at schools because you've got buses and parents and everything so i really think that it's like a community situation where you have to really work with woodmere academy uh, lawrence academy and just maybe they have to reconfigure that to help you guys out Again, the buses are mostly not from lawrence woodmere academy they're from hask which is special ed school and oh. the problem existed uh, okay. long before COVID. Right. Well, I'm just saying that maybe, you know, it's a community issue and that maybe yeah. something can be worked out. I think not only a community issue, probably a town issue. Yeah. One um, last, uh, one last point. Uh, there were supposedly registered letters sent out in January about the preliminary hearing. No one, no one got those. They were not. They were not sent, they were not received. So this came pretty much as a surprise to the entire neighborhood. It almost seemed underhanded. Staff, did we get, uh, do we have the notices? Yes, the preliminary subdivision application was properly noticed as well. They had a slight different notification. It was 14 days in advance. No one received it. No one got it. Please, please don't shout out 
we, you know, we have a court reporter who takes down every word that's said, and when people shout out multiple people talking at the same time, we can't keep a record. Thank I you. I think I spoke for them. No one received it. Okay, thank you. We've heard from you. Now I will just ask, um, Alan, I cannot read your handwriting. I'm Trader. sorry. In Trader. In Trader, okay. Yes. Your handwriting's about the same as mine. Thank you. I you can ask that. my attorney who's sitting in the back who just walked out. <laughs> Good morning, Commissioners. My name is Alan Intrader. I'm at 375 Westwood Road in Woodmere, New York. You know, originally um, I prepared some notes that I was going to share. But as I'm sitting here, I'm just like blown away with some of the comments. First, I realized that the, um, that the developer here has attorneys and all types of professionals or representatives. And we're here with just the people themselves, the actual neighbors. Now, it's not because we wouldn't have attorneys. The issue is, is of course, I first found out about this Tuesday afternoon because I actually pick up my mail um, from the post office itself. And I was looking at it in the post office. I said, oh, did any of my other of my neighbors get it, uh, get this? And they were telling me, oh, yeah, we got them uh, late today, and we'll be give, send them out tomorrow, meaning yesterday, Wednesday. So. This whole, and if you look at the actual letter that's written, it's written on July 7th. It doesn't actually mean that it was sent out on July 7th. It means it was written on July 7th. So I really take issue with this whole thing that we were properly notified, et sir, cetera. Sir, I, if you heard me speak before, there's a county charter which says when things have to be mailed and they're in compliance with the county charter. We can't change that rule. Who knows that? Who's telling you? Do you can you tell me that they were actually mailed on July 7th? Do you have the receipts, Mr. Prakas? Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. well, you, would, you would better use your time to move on to a different point. Well, we, your, we've heard the commissioner we, question. We've heard the now. point. I'm responding back. We've and heard forth. the point about the notice. You've heard the response. Do you have other points that you wish to raise? Well, your bias is quite noted, Mr. He, Lewis. Thank uh, I you. take issue with that as counsel to the commission. And I will speak for Commissioner Lewis, who's probably one of the fairest people I've met in my life, not just on this commission. So, well, I mean, accusing him of bias. Like sir, okay, to, sir, hold, hold, I'm, I'm, I'm I like speaking. This order. Uh, uh, if we can excuse me. Stay can I have order? And get, yes. Okay. State your case. Okay. You actually have a three minute rule in, okay. the, in, in the planning commission. You can speak for three minutes. We've allowed all of you to speak a lot longer than that. Correct. Okay, make your points. Thank you. We will take them into consideration, and we will ask that if there are any other comments, we will let people make their comments, but they're going to be quick. Okay, okay, we have a long agenda. I know this is important to you. Thank you. I've been involved with these things before. We have the 23-plus years on this commission. I've heard it all. I appreciate Okay, that. so please make your point and continue. Thank you. So getting past the, um, the non-notifications there, so the issues, of course, is as brought up, is the issue of the concern of bringing up, uh, kicking up the soil, kicking up asbestos. My children, especially during the summer, who are running around outside, I have, I'm blessed with a five-year-old and a three-year-old who are breathing in this asbestos possibly in the air. Then, of course, we're not even talking about the camp that's going on right next door on the same property of the school's property. So you see all those children running around and right literally on next door, when I say next door, in the same field that these children are at the swimming pool, et cetera, you see them running around. So God knows what's happening with them. Then, of course, is the issue of the side. So we, our home is on the corner of Greenfield and Westwood. And so you, the, there's like when the, uh, there's not enough room. If, in other words, if someone parks on one side, right, if you were to put homes on the other side, how would my children, with one car, there would be barely enough, excuse me, for one room for one car to go through, how are my children going to be bicycled down that road? So right now, there's enough room because you have the academy, you don't park on this side uh, by the field, so then there's enough room for, yes, someone to be on a bicycle or actually or someone walking in the road, whatever, and so a car to be coming, going by safely. Then, of course, there's the... Um, Then, of course, is the infrastructure. You know, in our area, in Long Island in general, there's issues with uh, brownouts especially, and the issue, of course, is more people on the grid causes more potential for brownouts, and I don't feel that it can be supported. 
Then, of course, there's the issue with water, water pressure even. Water pressure currently is adequate at best. More people using the same water, water pipes, et cetera, et cetera, less pressure. You know, then, of course, there's flooding. You, I can't tell you how many term, times I've turned from Woodmere Boulevard onto Greenfield on the way to my house where the whole place there is flooded after rain. So once again, I don't see how the sewage system can support it. Uh, one of the people uh, from the developers <coughs> stated before that no changes will need to be made. Like everything will be, uh, can, can be used. And I'm sitting there going, really? How can that be? Uh, currently, even it's right now, I feel our infrastructure is on teetering. Adding more to it will just blow it up. And then, of course, there's traffic. Traffic where when I'm coming down um, Mayfield or the other road, uh, Northfield, Mayfield, Northfield, onto Woodmere Boulevard when I'm coming out of my home, sometimes the cars are backed up, six or seven cars waiting to get onto Woodmere Boulevard. Adding more families and more cars to that will just absolutely become a nightmare. And for those and many other considerations, I ask that the commission turn down this uh, proposal, and I feel that it would be in best of interest of the current neighborhood to keep it the way it is. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Is there anybody else that wishes to be heard? Name and address for the record again, uh, please. Sylvia Brown, 928 Greenfield Road, Woodmere, New York, 11598. I think it's very interesting, Mr. Lewis, that you um, approved a lot of the comments made by Mr. Brown. How do you feel about the fact that right now, while this remediation is going on of the soil, there are children in a camp right on that property? Does that bother you, that children are breathing and are walking and are doing things right there. How do you feel about that, Mr. Lewis? Would you let your children be in that environment? Well, we feel the same way. And the other thing is, you keep calling it a sewer system. It's not a sewer system. It's, it's got a different kind of a name. It's some sort of a storage kind of a thing. It's not a real sewer. I think you have to think about, as I sit here, it looks like you, Mr. Lewis, particularly, have already made the decision that everything that Mr. Brown has said is perfectly fine with you. We are going to suffer with what you think is fine. So for today's hearing, there was no discussion of sewers. Anybody that used the word sewers was not using the correct terminology. So just so you understand, we talked about stormwater runoff, which results in flooding and the fact that each of these projects will meet a county standard of retaining five inches of water on their property, which is not currently the case. So all the points that have been made about stormwater are likely to see an improvement when the development takes place by meeting the county standards. That's what we talked about. I never used the word sewer. Um, the sewer system and the stormwater systems are completely different. Is, the, is, there, a, um, is there a drainage plan that's part of the plan, part of the plans, so that I mean maybe the community can understand it better if they if they need to see what's going to happen. Maybe that can be provided. Can, to can them we ask uh, Deputy Commissioner Nemo from uh, okay. DPW to speak Since to this? the Clean Water Act? Um, all the water that falls on property needs to be maintained on that property. So none of these homes will be adding stormwater to the roadway drainage system. They'll all need to keep the water on their property, so it can't be someone else's problem. So any drainage uh, issues that are in the street now will not be impacted, will not be increased. Thank you. And also, I, uh, you know, being involved with the county, what the county puts people through trying to do a development like this is a lot. The Department of Health is very, very, uh, very concerned that everything is is safe for everybody, and they put people through the ringer. And Mr. As Mr. Brown. Um, testified before so DPW and Department of Health really protect the constituents and again that was the reason I asked to, to confirm that the Department of Health had signed off on the remediation at, at the site as part of the plan to make it a site that can be uh, lived in by new residences so the concerns that were raised were concerns about 42 years use of property or more 
in a, in a way that is very common across Long Island in terms of uh, chemical pesticides used on lawns, yeah, it's a concern. Well, that for the property that's being subdivided that we're voting on, that is ended. That's now remediated and it's going to be residences. So those that have raised that concern should be happy with what has been uh, is, is before us to vote on today. So is that is it correct to say that the the uh, soil that is there now with the camps going on and children playing is safe? Like I nobody nobody is speaking to what the, the action before us is inside the boundaries. It's not the other property. My client just told me that when the testing was done, so the, 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 the levels that were found here were only slightly out of kilter for the residential standard. The standard that would apply to the school as a quote unquote commercial is, it, is fine. They're, 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 what the existing use would not be found to be environmentally problematic, but when you Propose putting homes on there. The, the, the yellow, the standard goes up. So, so the the, the property that will remain would the testing has shown that it is not in violation of the standards applicable to that property. The property that's being developed had to adhere to a slightly higher standard, which was the point of the remediation. And I thank Mr. Nimmo for his yeah. comments. I agree with him. It is an arduous process, the subdivision process because its goal is not to decide you know, what should go there, but that whatever does go there meets all of the engineering and health requirements that are imposed under the law. And that is why we have a DPW with all of its various sub-departments and the Department of Health that reviews it at the beginning, in the middle, and the end. And if you, again, if you, the law says if, if an applicant meets those criteria and the professionals certify that the criteria have been met, then it comes back to this body for essentially for, for this body to assure itself that, that everything has been done accurately, but, but then you know the applicant has basically a right to develop its property in accordance with the approved plans. But as a, as a parent, I, I hear what the concern of course. is because, you know, you have children, if you have children and you want them to be safe and everything. So, I mean, I, I hear the concern from the community. It gives me some assurance when you're stating exactly what's been done. I, I how, agree, agree what with you. What standards that it me, me, meets. You know, it, it does give some comfort. And so, don't, don't forget this camp has been going on, as I understand it, for many years. And they were using the property that's being developed now. The kids have been running on that lawn and playing in those areas for decades. So it, it, it's, it, that, that, that's, and that's. the state education department has changed some of the rules in recent years. So, you know, again, that's not really the question before us. The question before us is about the residential development. But sure, we would love to see, there's actually no need for any school to be using chemical pesticides where you have kids playing uh, on the field. Agree. You know, so. Mr. Brown, can I ask a question of course. on the process? I'm a new member on the board. Um, sure. So the process started how long ago? How, what, what, is, what is, you know, the, um, I, I see that everyone's concerned about the short notice, but from what I can see, this has been taking place for months. Pro oh, the whole process is probably about two years Okay, so we've been old. in the process of, of this application and this cleanup and all of the different varieties of, of what Nassau County makes you go through to do this for two years. Yes, what, what happens very briefly is in a major subdivision, an applicant will come in first to Nassau County, submit its initial application. That application is then routed around to, to the Department of Public Works and to the town of Hempstead in this case. Comments are made. Um, a separate application is simultaneously filed with the health department to begin the health department's process. Many different comments will be made, many different changes will go into the map to make to raise it to the standards that it needs to be raised to come to this commission for preliminary subdivision approval. That is a noticed public hearing. We come here, present the preliminary map, um, and, and we had a 
a hearing such as that on this case, and members of the community appeared at that hearing and made comments at that time. Uh, following preliminary approval, there will be additional comments and concerns that have to be addressed um, to, to basically to, to complete the engineering process and then typically to complete the remediation process. Once that is done and the, the departments have actually signed these Mylar maps, which are officially filed in the Office of the County Clerk, only then can we come back to the Commission. And it, it does take a long time and it is, it is very involved, a very expensive process. Um, but the upside is, you know, a tremendous amount of diligence is put in so that new developments are going to be engineered, have been engineered at a far higher standard than was the case when, you know, Mr. Levitt was building hundreds of houses at a clip. Nobody had to do anything like this. So, you, you're, you know, it's a, it's a burden to applicants, but the, you know, the, the benefit is, is, the, is the engineering and, um, you know, uh, environmental protections that come with the process. And the standards of today. Correct. Okay, thank you. All right, at this point, I think we're going to call, call the question. We've heard enough from everybody. We've listened to all of you who wanted to speak. Some of you want to come up for a second time. We have a long agenda. We've heard you. We understand where you're coming from. And now it's our job to do what we have to do for the Planning Commission, and that is to bring this to a vote. So I'm going to close this public hearing, and I'm going to ask the um, commission if anybody's got a motion. Uh, if I do it for you, I have to do it for other people. It's time that we move on. I, I think it's time. Honestly, I heard you earlier today. I've heard all of you who wanted to speak. Everybody's being repetitious on what they're saying, so I'd like to move forward. Commissioners? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion for NCPC file number 2002-F-2, Map of Campus Estates, property at Woodmere, town of Hempstead. The motion is to approve the final subdivision map. I'll so I'm I'll sorry, I'll the bond is on the bond. John, do you, do you have those numbers? Because we didn't have those numbers last. Where's John? Uh, I have them. You have them? I have them. Um, inspection fee of $42,060.22, cash escrow of $12,515.05, and a bond of $337,986.75. Accept that as a friendly amendment to the motion. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a second? A second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Opposed. Okay, we need a roll, uh, roll call. Then you want a roll call, please. Commissioner Warren? Yes. Commissioner Sakowitz? Yes. Commissioner Kaladi is not present. Uh, Commissioner Gold? Yes. Commissioner Foreman? No. Commissioner Ellerby? Yes. Vice Chair Lewis? Yes. Um, uh, other Vice Chair Greenfield is excused. And Chairman Shapiro? Yes. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six. Six, yes. Four, one, against. Two, six, Thank one. You. Six, one. Okay, let's proceed with the um, calendar, please. Minus subdivisions. Yeah. Greg, you're up. All right, let's continue, Commissioners. <clears throat> you can't, you can't answer them yet because they don't stay uh, First up, we have NCPC file 35 of 2022. This is an application for a two-lot subdivision at 116 Wyckoff Place, uh, Hamlet of Woodmere, Town of Hempstead in their residential A zoning district. 
Uh, this is an 18,500 square foot area subject property situated on the east side of Wyckoff Place. Uh, the application proposes to subdivide the property, which has 125 feet of frontage on Wyckoff Place, into two separate parcels. Proposed lot A will have 62 and a half feet of frontage by 150 feet for a total of 9,375 square feet. And proposed lot B will also have 62 and a half feet of frontage on Wyckoff Place with a depth of 150 feet for a total of 9,125 square feet. Uh, the Town of Hempstead Department of Buildings has issued a letter of zoning compliance for the proposed subdivision and the application is considered as of right. Uh, here today representing the applicant, uh, 116 Wyckoff LLC, we have Christian Brown. Good morning again, Christian Brown, McLaughlin and Stern, 1122 Franklin Avenue, Garden City. On this application, uh, this is an as of right minor subdivision. As Mr. Hessel laid out, the lots are both uh, in excess of 9,000 square feet. They have over 60 feet of frontage. Uh, so this is a zoning compliance subdivision which contemplates the construction of two new single family homes to replace the old home on this property. And uh, that really covers this application. I, I won't belabor it any further. Commissioners, any any questions? Then Did I'll... it bring out a crowd for this one? <laughs> All right, now take a motion. Don't all jump at once. I'll make a motion that we approve NCPC case number 35-2022. Neg deck. All those in favor? All right. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank um, you. Have a good day. At, at this time, I'm going to recuse myself on the next two cases, and I'll turn it over to uh, Commissioner Greenfield. Thank you. Uh, next up, Wait we have... Uh, Councillor Brown, you have no more cases here, so these should go smoothly? Okay. <laughs> next case, please. Next case is NCPC file 36 of 2022. This is an application from the town of North Hempstead uh, for a two lot subdivision at 100 Fairway Drive in the Hamlet of Port Washington in the town of North Hempstead's planned urban development commercial recreation zoning district. Uh, this is a 201,047 square foot area subject property on the north side of Fairway Drive. Uh, the application proposes to subdivide the property, which has 346 feet of frontage on Fairway Drive, into two separate parcels. Proposed lot A will have 346 feet of frontage on Fairway, with a depth of 440 feet, a total of 174,240 square feet, or four acres. And then proposed lot B will be 120 feet by 275 feet, uh, a total of 26,807 square feet. Town of North Hempstead Department of Planning and Environmental Protection has issued a letter of zoning compliance for the proposed subdivision and the application is considered as of right. Uh, so proposed lot A in this application will be sold to the Archangel Michael Greek Orthodox Church, which is next door to the uh, subject property, for development as athletic fields, while proposed lot B will be retained by the Town of North Hempstead for use as a stormwater basin with a 20-foot wide easement allowing access. Uh, here today representing the town, uh, we have Mark Cuthbertson. Uh, good morning, Mr. Vice Chairman, members of the board. Uh, Mark Cuthbertson, 434 New York Avenue, Huntington, New York, 11743 for the town of North Hempstead. I'm also joined by Peter Cotolides, who represents the Archangel Michael Church and Mike Kelly, who is a uh, deputy town attorney for the town of North Hempstead. Uh, Mr. Hezel, who has been tremendously responsive and cooperative in this application, uh, described it well. Uh, it's just splitting off a recharge basin for the town of North Hempstead, ma maintaining an access easement, and then the church is going to get a four acre lot for ball fields. Um, uh, and you know, there, it's outdoor ball ball fields with a parking lot and uh, ancillary buildings are what is contemplated and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have about that. Well, I thank you for the compliment for staff. We are very proud of our small but great staff and the great job they did during Zoom era 
And now that we're back in person, they continue to do a great job. So thank you for that. Any, we have no one from the public registered. So, Any? so just to understand the plan, that you're going to have the um, property desig de designated as a stormwater basin that the town will take charge of. I mean, it's it's an existing stormwater recharge basin. So we can kind of see it to the yep. right edge of the correct. So you retain that, and then the rest becomes the ball ball fields for correct. The, the, There'll be a parking lot uh, in the front, and then ball fields in the back, and. There'll be an easement over the parking lot into the recharge basin. You so, know, I mean, in, in the prior, uh, the um, hearing slightly before, you know, just before this one, or the first hearing this morning, put it that way, um, we heard a lot of concern about uh, ball fields used by a school for many, many years. Right. And, uh, uh, the use of chemical pesticides and such. So now, um, for this project, you're going to introduce that use at the site alongside the uh, water base that is correct is there any um, uh, is there any agreement as to how they're going to maintain those fields that would uh, ensure that that it doesn't present any concerns for the drinking water that would be recharged in the in the basin yeah I, I don't th no it's not contemplated as a part of that and that's not something that ordinarily is uh, required my understanding of you know the remediation that goes along with some of the other things that happened prior to this is that that is a standard when there is a certain size residential subdivision because of concern I, I think mainly with arsenic and chemicals that were used in farming uh, that if the lands being disturbed that there's going to be a remediation there's not you know besides a, you know a parking lot and those other things there's not going to be the type of disturbance of land that there would be uh, with uh, residential and my understanding as well is that um, uh, again unless you're disturbing those fields it normally does not present a uh, any sort of health issue you know as can be seen by the, the you know hundreds of ball fields and schools that are out there where that type of thing is not required I understand it is is done in the context of major subdivisions but in the rest of the world that's not a requirement I think that's correct. Um, nonetheless, I, I would say that at, this is a transaction between the town and the school, correct? So you could, as part of that agreement, have a commitment from the school as to how they're going to manage the uh, fields in a way that would at least minimize any uh, concerns about, you know, or ideally they would commit to not using uh, chemicals at all near. It's a transaction. Area. Uh, between the town and the church and the, the contract has been fully negotiated it's contingent upon this approval but that that was not contemplated as a part of that transaction I also think there's a golf course across the street from this am I right or wrong? And nearby there is a golf course sure. nearby so yeah, I mean, which was the site of a, previously of a, a, of a landfill. Of landfill yeah yeah so it's only definitely putting in the right direction okay Any other questions from any of the commissioners not hearing or seeing anyone will entertain a motion at this time. Don't be bashful. So moved. Not all at once. Go ahead. I, I make a motion to um, minus subdivision uh, file number 37 dash, I'm sorry, 36 dash 2022 with a negative deck. Motion made a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So carried. We could do an easy one. <laughs> Throw us another easy one there. Go ahead. Sure. Uh, this is good. Ed's. Thank you, North Hempstead. And thank you, Mr. Kelly. I didn't recognize the alumni in the audience. We have an alumni in the audience. Mike Kelly used to be here. Pre-COVID beard. Welcome back. Uh, this is NCPC file 37 of 2022, an application for a two-lot subdivision at 78 Clapham Avenue, uh, Hamlet of Manhasset, Town of North Hempstead in their residential C uh, zoning district. This is a 10,000-square-foot uh, area subject property situated on the southeast corner of Clapham Avenue and 3rd Street. Uh, the application proposed to subdivide the property, which has 100 feet of frontage on Clapham Avenue, into two equal parcels. Both proposed lot A and lot B will have 50 feet of frontage on Clapham Avenue with depths of 100 feet for a total of 5,000 square feet each. 
Uh, the town of North Hempstead Department of Building, Safety, Inspection, and Enforcement has issued a letter of zoning compliance for the proposed uh, subdivision with the condition that the existing detached garage located on the premises be demolished. Therefore, the application is considered as of right. And as shown on the radius map, the vast majority of homes in this area, area are situated on lots that have 50 feet of frontage and 100 feet of depth. Uh, here today representing the applicants, we have uh, Seth Levine. Good morning, Seth Levine, Richmond and Levine, 666 Old Country Road, Garden City. Uh, I would also like to echo the sentiments of the excellent work done uh, getting to this point by the staff and the commission. So thank you very much for that. Uh, it was perfectly described. This is a application for a minor subdivision uh, as of right, dividing one uh, 10,000 square foot lot into two 5,000 square foot lots. Uh, the Town of North Hempstead Department of Building Safety Inspection and Enforcement has issued a zoning compliance letter. Uh, both lots will meet all of the required uh, lot areas and frontage requirements. Um, one of the homeowners, Frank Huang, is here today, as well as uh, Marcelo Cohan of DeLarge and Designs, the architect who is uh, instrumental in supplying the documentation to the town. If there's any questions, uh, we'd be happy to entertain them. Thank you. Uh, we have no one signed up from the audience, and thank you again for your, your good compliments to the staff. Uh, any commissioners have any questions? Not seeing any or hearing any? We'll entertain a motion at this time. I make a motion for, an, uh, for I make a motion to approve uh, NCPC file number 37-2022 with the negative deck. Second. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So carried. Thank you. <clears throat> well, we'll welcome back the chairman and tell him that during my two cases we moved a lot <laughs> quicker than you did when I was recused. <laughs> And in this case, yes, Council's excuse. And I, I just wanted the director to reflect that I didn't recuse myself because that case was on Greenfield Road. Ah. I took a picture of it. I only found out when the case started that there was Greenfield Road there. Uh, this is NCPC file 38 of 2022. This is an application for a two lot subdivision at 145 Murray Hill Street. Uh, the hamlet of Elmont, town of Hempstead, in their residential B zoning district. Uh, this is a 6,240 square foot area subject property situated on the south side of Murray Hill Street. The application proposed to subdivide the property, which has 78 feet of frontage on Murray Hill Street, into two equal parcels. Uh, both proposed lot A and proposed lot B will have 39 feet of frontage on Murray Hill Street with a depth of 80 feet. Uh, with each lot totaling 3,120 square feet. Uh, the Town of Hampstead Board of Appeals has approved the request for variances. Uh, for both lot A and lot B, you have subdivision of lot, front width from and on street line to front setback line, lot area, lot area occupied, side yard aggregate, and constructed dwelling with the garage, with the lot A having to demolish the existing dwelling. Uh, this application was previously seen as a zoning referral at our March 31st NCPC hearing of this year where a denial was issued. Uh, reasons for the denial included a significant departure from the zoning code, being out of character with the surrounding properties, and the potential for establishing a precedent of other similar substandard subdivisions. Uh, here today representing the applicant, we have Howard Abertine. Good morning. Appearing for the applicant, Howard Avertine, 2116 Merrick Avenue, Merrick. Congratulations, uh, um, Chairman Shapiro, on your uh, appointment. Um, I wish you the best. Uh, Mr. Hessel, as typical, prov uh, provided an excellent uh, summation of the application. Uh, the, I'll get right to the point, uh, and that would be the Planning Commission's recommendation of disapproval, and I would like to take a few moments, if I may, to, to provide some information uh, that was offered at the Town of Hempstead Board of Appeals hearing that this Commission would not have been privy to when making its determination and recommendation. And, Council, I'll just interrupt you to, to clarify on the record. So, our referral was a denial, just to be clear. That's correct. 
the, the Planning Commission recommended disapproval um, at, at, by virtue of a resolution issued on March 31. Uh, the, the essentially, I'll, I'll just take you through some uh, some basic statistics in connection with the application. The overall property is 78 feet in width by 80 feet in depth, 6,240 square feet in lot area. The proposal seeks to create two parcels, each with dimensions of 39 feet in width by 80 feet in depth, and a lot area of 3,120 square feet each. The proposal includes uh, construction of two modest colonial dwellings. Uh, each will have a one-car in, uh, interior garage with a two-car parking pad, so space for three vehicles on each of the proposed parcels. The uh, radius map, I'll give you some, some uh, statistics in connection with the radius map. Uh, within the 100-foot radius of the premises, there are 15 lots. Uh, 12 of those lots, or 80 percent, are non-compliant in, in some respect to the Residence B zoning district requirements. Uh, nine of, of the lots within the 100-foot radius, or 75 percent, have frontages of 40 feet uh, or less. Within the 200-foot radius, there are 38 lots. 28 of those, or 74 percent, are non-compliant as to zoning. 25 of those, or 89 percent, have less street frontage uh, than required in the Residence B zoning district. Uh, 21 of the 38 have 40 feet or less of frontage, and 24 of 38 have less lot area. So uh, you have really an area that was largely developed uh, in the, 19, I would say, 1940s or early 1950s, and at a time when uh, the residence B requirements are not what they are today, 6,000 square feet and 55 feet of frontage. Uh, it was also pointed out that uh, the Board of Appeals issued numerous variances. Uh, the record at the Board of Appeals uh, indicates that there were 22 variances granted within a five block radius of the subject premises. Uh, there is uh, just directly to the west of the subject premises uh, two houses down, the street address is 2015 uh, Murray Hill Street, and uh, if you have the radius map available to review, uh, it, the owner is Johnson, and it is identical uh, to what is being proposed here, 39 feet in width by 80 feet in depth, uh, and a lot area of 3,120 uh, square feet, and that was a variance issued in 1999 uh, by the Board of Appeals. And that lot, um, ex uh, excuse me, no, uh, that variance was, no, excuse me, my mistake. It was granted in 1999 uh, by the Board of Appeals and developed with a single family home, a colonial style dwelling. And it is, as I indicated, uh, just to the west of the subject. Uh, the Parcels within the radius that are either equal to or less in lot width total eight, uh, and so you have you also have two that are equal to or less than uh, the subject proposal in lot in lot area. So let's first go over the lot width. Again, you have uh, the premises at two zero one five. Murray Hill Street, directly to the west, which is identical uh, to what is being proposed. Uh, we also have uh, to the north on LZ Street, there is the, the street address is 218 uh, LZ Street, and it is 26 feet in width uh, by 80 feet in depth with a total lot area of 2,080 square feet. There is to the south of the subject premises, on Circle Drive North, uh, on the, the westerly side of the radius map, 
You have a, a, the street address is 75 Circle Drive North. It has a lot width of 36 feet and a lot area of 4,089 square feet. Further to the east on Circle Drive North, you have uh, four parcels uh, where Circle Drive North meets Circle Drive East, each of, which, with, each of which, I should say, is significantly less in street frontage than that which is proposed. The premises at 105 Circle Drive North has a width of 32.5 feet. The property at 107 Circle Drive North is 32.5 feet. The property at 37 Circle Drive North is 32.50 feet. And the parcel, I, I'm not sure if the address, I think it's the address is uh, 113. So either Circle Drive East or Circle Drive North has a width of 35 feet. So there are several parcels uh, in the 200 foot radius which are substantially similar to that which is being proposed here. And if you look at uh, all, pretty much all of Circle Drive North, you have 40 by 100 lots. And so this is really not a compliant area uh, zoning wise. And the Board of Appeals of the Town of Hempstead, in its discretion, uh, determined that uh, it was appropriate to grant the variances requested. Uh, they concluded that it would not create an undesirable change in the character of the, of the neighborhood. They, they applied the standards set forth in the town law regarding area variances and determined that based on the evidence presented to them that uh, if this was a reasonable and appropriate um, request for variance relief. It should also be noted that there was uh, no community opposition whatsoever to the proposal. Uh, this is an area uh, of Elmont that has been going through some changes and the evidence also indicated at the hearing that with the construction of two new single family dwellings that the impact of that would be to have a positive effect on property values in the area for the existing homes as new construction often uh, does uh, when, when, new, when homes of this nature are constructed. In, in all, also in, in full compliance with current 2022 standards. So on, on the full compliance, we saw an uh, image there. I don't know if the staff could scroll back one, one click. Um, is, so what are we seeing here? Is, is, is the neighboring property coming right up to the property line because these properties are so tight? Well, there's an, that, that's a retaining wall for the neighboring property. The existing uh, property has Uh, there's a small bungalow and a detached garage, which apparently was converted to uh, an illegal dwelling by the prior owner. Uh, you can see Shocking that, the, that that never happens in the town of Hempstead. Uh, unfortunately, it does sometimes happen for whatever the reasons are. Those built, you that can see happens. they're boarded up. Those, built, those structures are going to be demolished and the property developed as I've um, described. So... Uh, it's going to ob it's going to be uh, as uh, you'd expect with two new single-family homes. It's going to be uh, developed in a way that will be an asset to the community, and this blight that uh, that you can see in the photos is going to be remediated. So, so it sounds like it's an improvement, and the information you put on the record today, I wish we would have had before we voted denial at the um, level when it came on the zoning calendar. And uh, this is a totally different picture than uh, we looked at. Uh, at a, and in the pre-meeting, I told especially the new commissioners mm -hmm. that you would put this information on the record because you've appeared before us once or twice before. Yes, sir. And you had a public hearing, and you're saying that there was no community opposition. It was reported that the commission had voted for the denial at that hearing, correct? That, that is correct, and specifically uh, that the commission's resolution recommending denial was addressed at the hearing and uh, evidence uh, offered, uh, as I indicated, along the lines that I've just summarized, 
which unfortunately the process often when the commission is considering zoning referrals doesn't afford an opportunity to, to get before the commission in making its recommendation the right. same and, and, and I would also say you know fortunately or you know or so that's our process you know what I mean that we're giving a county perspective and we you know we're giving our perspective based on what's presented to us from the village and uh, that doesn't mean that that's necessarily the vote we would take today um, the denial was reported it was discussed at the meeting if the public had showed up with concerns that might have given greater argument to those that had those concerns so that's the process how it's meant to play out we raised our concerns this is a very small property but again that doesn't uh, forestall us from considering the application favorably today thank you so commissioners any other questions mr. chairman I make a motion of approval of NCPC minor sub file 38 dish 2022 property in Elmont uh, look that neg deck Sarah Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. One second. Mr. Chairman, I regret it. I got to recuse myself. Uh, I have to excuse myself and leave. I have a flight booked, and I never knew we were going to be so late today, and I never knew my flight was going to be on time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Have a safe flight, Commissioner Greenfield. Okay, next case, Greg. Uh, this is NCPC file 39 of 2022, an application for a two lot subdivision at 1427 Belmore Road, uh, the hamlet of North Belmore, town of Hempstead in their residential B zoning district. Uh, this is a 12,000 square foot area subject property situated on the southeast corner of Belmore Road and Camp Fee Place. Um, the application proposes to subdivide the property, which has 120 feet of frontage on Belmore Road, into two equal parcels. Both lot A and lot B will have 60 feet of frontage on Belmore Road with a depth of 100 feet uh, for a total of 6,000 square feet each. The Town of Hempstead Department of Buildings has issued a letter of zoning compliance for the proposed subdivision, and the application is considered as of right. Uh, here today representing the applicant uh, is Howard Averton. Good morning again. Appearing for the applicant, Howard Averteen, 2116 Merrick Avenue, Merrick. Uh, Mr. Hessel once again presented uh, the case uh, substantially, and uh, we have two proposed zoning compliant parcels, each with dimensions of 60 feet in width by 100 feet in depth. Uh, There's complete and total zoning compliance. Two new colonial style dwellings are proposed, each of which will have one car internal garage and two car parking pad and uh, it's clearly in compliance with uh, the code and in in the character uh, of the surrounding area commissioners any questions if not I'll take a motion sorry make a motion to um, approve NCPC minus sub file 39-2022 um, with a NAIG deck. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you again. Have a great afternoon. Okay. Uh, last on the agenda is NCPC file 40 of 2022 an application for a two-lot subdivision at 221 Oyster Bay Road, also known as Route 106, in the incorporated village of Muttontown, uh, in their E3 zoning district, which requires three acres of area. Uh, the property is also located within 300 feet of the border with the incorporated village of Brookville. Uh, this is a 267,706 square foot or 6.15 acres 
uh, subject property situated on the east side of uh, Oyster Bay Road in the incorporated village of Muttontown within 300 feet incorporated village of Brookville. Application proposes to subdivide the property which has 458.25 feet of frontage on Route 106 into two separate parcels. Proposed lot A will have 229.125 feet of frontage uh, by 594.9 feet for a total of 133,197 square feet or 3.057 acres. Proposed lot B will also have 229.125 feet of frontage by approximately 630 feet, a total of 134,508 square feet or 3.087 acres. Uh, the Incorporated Village of Muttontown Planning Board voted unanimously to grant preliminary approval of the proposed subdivision at their November 9, 2021 hearing. The Incorporated Village of Brookville Planning Board, uh, which as stated is uh, located within 300 feet of the subject property, voted unanimously to approve the proposed subdivision application at their March 16, 2022 hearing. Uh, additionally, the applicant has submitted a stormwater management plan uh, consistent with a uh, slope of 25% or greater on the subject property. Uh, here, here today representing the applicant is Philip Butler. Greg, before you go, how, how come it took so long between the approvals to get to us here now? Um, I don't know if I could answer that. Uh, Maybe I'll leave that for the attorney. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Philip Butler with the law firm of Farrell Fritz, 100 Motor Parkway, Hop Hog, New York. Uh, thank you for hearing the application. The answer to the chairman's question is that we were waiting on the written um, approval from the village of Brookville. It took them a while to get us the written decision. Uh, we did not want to submit until we had that in hand. Um, apart from that, I wish I had more to add, but uh, it was summarized quite well already, so I won't belabor anything. Um, I will mention that both villages approved the preliminary subdivision without any comments. Um, and without any conditions. So the adjoining communities did not have any issues with the, uh, with the subdivision. Going to be very large lots, going to be very large um, setbacks, 75 feet minimum from uh, Route 106. Uh, that's just to the, to the edge of the building envelope, so the actual structures uh, conceivably will not be even that close. Uh, and then a minimum of 50 feet from the side yards. Um, but that's all of my comments. Thank you. Any Thank questions, you. commissioners? I noticed there were a lot of trees on the properties, and I know that some villages, um, if you take down a tree, you have to put up a tree. Mm -hmm. Is that the case in Brookville? I don't believe so, but as if you can see on, on the plans that were submitted, I don't know if you can, but there's, there's a very large number of trees on, on this property. Um, we're losing probably about 20 to 30 of them because most of the interior of the property has already been cleared for the existing residence that's there and the accessory structures. So we're not losing that much more um, in terms of coverage. and. Um, there will be abundant screening to the side, um, north and south, and uh, again, there's a large stand of mature trees along Route 106. There's no intention to touch those except to put in the uh, second driveway that's going to have to go in for the uh, second residence. Thank you. For stormwater runoff, are you going to um, include any of the technology that is required when, we're, when it's a large subdivision similar to what we, if you sat through our hearing today, we discussed earlier where uh, when you do have a subdivision, there's a requirement that you retain five inches on uh, uh, of retainage uh, on each site. You don't have that requirement here because this is not a major subdivision. But will there be any stormwater um, runoff devices built into the uh, design for the, for the property? Well, we haven't quite gotten to um, the point that we've designed the actual site plans that are going to be submitted to the village of Muttontown yet, but the requirement would be, I, I believe, that we would have to have 100% capture for impervious surfaces. So, of course, there will be leaching structures on site to capture rainfall. I don't know. I don't know the capacity of them. They haven't been designed yet, um, but that's my understanding. Any other questions? That will take a motion. So I'll make a, uh, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion on NCPC file number 40 of 2022. And the motion is to approve a NAG deck and to approve the subdivision. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Motion carries. Thank you very much. Have a good afternoon. <clears throat> Marty, yeah. in the um, effort of time, um, are there any uh, questions on the LDs, commissioners? You want to go over here? Marty, you want to start with three? Case number three on the zoning agenda is the NCTC case number 38322. This is within the village of uh, Floral Park, and this is for area uh, slash density and the parking uh, variances. Uh, this is a proposed two-story mixed-use building with a ground floor <coughs> retail of about 6,100 square feet and 10 residential units on the second floor. The site is 17,400 square feet. The site is currently vacant with the previous commercial use having been uh, destroyed by a fire. The parking variance is required with 18 spaces proposed and 45 spaces required based on two parking spaces per unit and one in a parking <coughs> space per 250 square feet of retail space. Uh, also a density variance is required as eight of the uh, 10 units have less than a required minimum, minimum of 1,000 square feet of habitable floor area. Those units that do not conform to minimum require, required habitable floor area have floor area areas that range from 780 to 920 square feet, which is, I feel, fairly reasonable. The apartment mix consists of eight one-bedroom and two two-bedroom units. Uh, the entire commercial strip between Marshall Avenue and Beverly Avenue was destroyed by a fire. However, a 20-foot wide strip at the corner of Covert, and Beverly, Covert Avenue and Beverly Avenue is not part of the subject property as the owner of, it, owner of it did not sell this narrow strip to the developer and may rebuild it as a restaurant that would be attached to a proposed mixed-use building. The site is surrounded uh, by the following uses. To the east, of course, Covert Avenue are storefronts. To the south, of course, Marshall Avenue is a variety store pharmacy. To the west are homes. To the north, of course, Beverly Avenue is, is a strip of stores. Uh, Stewart Manor, I think, is across the street uh, from uh, the property on the other side of Covert Avenue. Um, this case was pre previously before the uh, Planning Commission on 3-31-2022, at which time the Commission requested a traffic parking analysis because of the parking uh, shortfall. Said analysis was prepared and concluded the following. From a traffic perspective, one, based on industry standards, the proposed project is expected to generate nine vehicle trips during the weekday morning peak hour, 26 vehicle trips during the weekday afternoon peak hour, and 31 vehicle trips during the Saturday midday peak hour. This represents an increase in the study area of traffic of slightly more than 1%, which is considered uh, ins uh, insignificant. Um, uh, two, due to the modest volume of site-generated traffic, the no road network will be able to adequately accommodate the newly generated traffic. From a parking perspective, following was concluded. One, the maximum number of park vehicles generated by the use would be 26 at any, any one time based on industry standards. While, while only 18 parking spaces are provided, there is adequate capacity when including available on-street parking to satisfy parking demand at the relevant times of day. Two, during the overnight periods, the development will generate no more than 13 park vehicles, which can be accommodated by the on-site parking without generating any parking spillover. It should be noted that parking spillover did occur with the previous uh, strip commercial use uh, when, and when it was a strip of stores, and I don't think included uh, uh, um, on-site parking, so staff recommends local determination. Commissioners, any questions? All right. Um, any other questions on the LDs? One, two, three. Five, six, or ten. Not seeing any. I'll take a motion for LD on NCPC zoning items. And, um, one, two, three, five. Excuse, excuse me. I just Wait. need to recuse myself on on uh, number on number one. Okay. So if you want to break it into two motions, or yeah, we'll do it in two motions. Okay. Uh, and also, you're off on Freeport. Number seven. Seven, but that's later on. That's not an LD. Okay, so I'll take a motion on NCPC um, zoning agenda item number one. Is there a motion? I make a 
motion on uh, NCPC case number 610122 um, to local um, determination. determination. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, now we'll do a uh, motion on NCPC item, zoning item, agenda items number two, three, five, six, and ten. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve local determinations or LDs on items two, three, five, six, and ten. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, Marty, let's do um, number seven next. And uh, oh, Commissioner Ellaby is recused. Okay. Uh, yes. Item number seven on the zoning agenda is NCPC case number 628122. Uh, disregard the case number on your staff summary. This is the uh, actual number. And uh, this is the uh, village of uh, Freeport, and it's... Um, uh, for a site plan review. This is site plan, uh, site plan approvals being sought to, sought to expand the existing Porsche, Porsche South Shore dealership by proposing a 14,471 square foot one story addition to an existing building and a 2,830 square foot interior second floor addition to the existing building on the southeast corner of Sunrise Highway and South Long Beach uh, uh, Avenue, as well as the expansion of parking on the southwest corner of Sunrise uh, Highway and South Long Beach Avenue. The case was previously before the Planning Commission on 4 28 2022 for variances for lot coverage, side yard, rear yard, loading uh, zone required, buffer zone, on site parking for the new building, use variance for a commercial use on residentially zoned property. The variances were granted by the village. At that time, the Planning Commission recommended a couple of modifications. One was the closure of Lexington, the Lexington, Lexington Avenue access. Lexington Avenue is a residential street. Two, provide a landscape screening between the expanded parking lot for parcel two and homes to the west. And three, provide landscape screening between the proposed building expansion on parcel one and the apartment property located to the south. That would require a small reduction of uh, the proposed building footprint. The current site plan shows that the NC, that NCPC recommendations one and two were implemented uh, in the current site plan, but not recommendation three, which was to reduce the building size of the footprint and provide some kind of uh, landscape buffer. Um, Uh, the parking lot expansion west of South Long Beach Avenue and the expansion of the building east of Long Beach a Avenue requires the demolition of four homes on the north side of Lexington Avenue. Um, overall, the project is parking compliant when taking the, uh, two, the two parcels into consideration. Um, yeah, staff is recommendation, recommending local determination with a letter stating that consideration uh, may be given to slightly modifying the building footprint on parcel one in order to accommodate a landscape screening to soften the visual impact of the expanded building for residents of the abutting apartment, abutting apartment complex as the proposed building goes right to the property line. Is there any um, landscape buffer there now? Uh, right now there are homes there actually. They're going to be demolishing homes. So. Um, there's no uh, on the other buffer side, per se, but there's yards that the homes, you know. On the other side of the homes, there is a buffer. So you already have a buffer there. Right. Well, yeah, there's a, there's a buffer now. They're going to demolish the homes and they're going to build the, the new building. Um, I know, but when you get to the end of the property. There'll be another house. There'll be another house, house. there'll be a buffer. And there will be a buffer. And is there a landscape? The up fifth there? house is going to remain because they were demolishing four, right? They were demolishing four. The fifth one should have a landscape buffering between the fifth house and where the fourth was. Well, I, I, maybe the site plan could could visual could show it a little little better. Have uh, you visited the other this? One, it's that one. It's. Uh, Did you by any chance visit this? Oh yeah, no, I, I've seen it. Yeah. So is there a, a landscape? Is there landscaping between the fifth house and the fourth? 
they're, they're demolishing four houses, the fifth is staying, so there must be a landscape buffer between the fourth and fifth house. If there is, then you don't need a landscape buffer there. I'm sure that they're going to do plantings anyhow, but, you know. Yeah, right. They're demolishing four homes, aren't what's they? Next, what's next to the, what's next to the, huh? So the, the, the other two are on the other side of the street. Because there's only two getting demolished here. Right. There is no buffer. Okay, then, then that's what I was trying to figure out. You know. All right, then. Okay. Thank you. Uh, commissioners? Any questions? Want to make, anybody want to make a motion? Predicated on staff's recommendation? Everybody jump at once. I'll make a motion. <laughs> you get it. <laughs> I put it away already. I'm sorry. That's okay. NC, it's NCPC file number seven. Uh, NCPC file number seven. I make a recommendation for a local determination. With a letter? With a letter. With a letter. With, stating, uh, stating that uh, uh, the commission feels that it, uh, a buffer should be installed in that area. Okay. So landscape buffer, yes. Landscape buffer, I'm sorry. A, is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. But just on that, on, when, when we recommend the landscaping buffer like we do, it's not required or do they have to? They can um, override us. The town um, board can, but well, they have to have a unanimous vote. Is that how it's done? No, no. What, so, what is, with, with a letter, it's a recommendation. You're asking. Right. That they don't have to. So they don't have to. Okay. They're asking them to take that in consideration. Okay. If it's a modification or a denial, then they need a super majority. So if gotcha. you take the Town of Hempstead Zoning Board, which has seven members, instead of needing a four affirmative votes, they would need five, five. affirmative votes. Right. But their recommendation letter, they can just say we're not doing right. it. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Number nine, Marty. Okay. And if you could give us sure. the abridged version. This one's pretty abridged anyhow. Uh, this is NCPC case number uh, 75122, Town of Oyster Bay. Applicants of Town Board, and it's an amendment to the zoning ordinance. Two amendments to the Town uh, Zoning Ordinance. The first amendment redefines gross floor area for residential properties by including basements with a ceiling height greater than seven feet as part of gross uh, floor area within all residential zoning districts except uh, the R120, R1. 1A, R12A, and R15A. The current code does not count basements as part of gross floor area. The second amendment. Uh, Mar Marty, let me interrupt you there. Can we take the first one first? So yeah. on, the, on the first one, staff is recommending LD, basically. Right, okay. right. So. Um, Se the second one, it, it has. Yeah, right. You are correct. So, so I, I'm just wondering in terms really, of breaking it, it out. You probably need to break this out. Yeah, no, it'll it. be broken out when the resolution in, is. Two. So definitely. Let's let's talk about the First Amendment and vote on that. And that's, then the Second Amendment. That's what I'm thinking. I think okay. that might be cleaner. Yeah. 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 So, uh, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion for local determination for NCPC case number 75122 as to the first of the two amendments we're going to address here today, the one having to do with basements. So LD on the basements. Is there a second? I second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that motion carries. Now let's do the second one. Okay, the second amendment repeals the provision that the town adopted that allows apartments over stores and offices. The town actually repealed this provision in 2021. The local law repealing this provision allowed, uh, allowing apartments over stores and offices was uh, initially referred to the Planning Commission in 2021. At that time, the commission recommended den denial. However, the town had already appealed the provision prior to its referral to the Planning Commission in 2021, which uh, the town realizes is a procedural error. The town now wants to correct, correct this procedural oversight 
by referring it to the Planning Commission and voting on it um, after the com it gets its uh, recommendation back from the Planning Commission. Um, it should be noted that apartments over storefronts will continue to be permitted in one location, only one location within the town, and that's the Hicksville Downtown Zoning District. Staff has recommended denial for this amendment, which would be Amendment 2, that eliminates apartments over stores because it does, uh, it limits housing options in commercial hubs in central business districts that are proximate to rail stations and it does detract from economic, economic vi uh, vitality of downtowns. And this, these were some of the points made in our initial denial. So and they're trying to correct the procedural error. All right, so let me ask something. Yeah. So presently, you go into downtown Oyster Bay in the Hamlet. Yeah. There are apartments over all right. those. Right, those, those are pre-existing. Those are pre-existing. Right. So this is on any new construction. Right, right, right. Okay, and it, so any new construction, they don't, except for Hicksville, they don't want to allow apartments over stores. Yeah. And, and they did repeal that, uh, that provision in 2021 that the commission, did, you know, denied because the commission at that point in time thought that it was, uh, you know, under well, certain well, circumstances. Well, technically that repeal is null and void because it didn't go through the process right. that the state sets out to provide, yeah. where we get a chance to provide a referral, it goes on the record and then they take the vote. So now they're cleaning it up and redoing it, which is a good thing. And so really that procedural question is behind us. Now it's just the substantive question and the staff recommendation is for the denial because of uh, the belief that we want to see some, uh, you know, appropriate places where you could include uh, apartments, right. apartments over, over stores in, in local downtown. Right. Do you, do you know what the vote was in the town of uh, Oyster Bay on this amendment in, their, uh, in, the, in the previous? Was it, was it unanimous? Was it, was it a that, majority? Because if, if, if it was, we're, you know. Uh, initially, I, I don't know that we don't normally get that uh, that information from from the town of Oyster Bay, but I don't know. Okay, but it I just was they might it have provided it with the application so that we don't spin our wheels and deny it just to be. Well, know. we we would be. I don't know. I don't want to say we'd be spinning our wheels, but we would be making the same point that we made initially. I think that's a great point. I mean, you know, how did we just say a blanket across the whole thing? No, I mean, you know, we're looking to. You know, move forward in housing, and and you know, just to say, Hicksville can do it only, but nobody else in the town. Right, you have to be consistent. Be ludicrous. Yep. <laughs> has to be consistent. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you're you're talking about we talked prior to Article 78. I mean, I, I think it'd be opened up tremendously if we were well, to it's discriminating against, against other, anybody. Yeah, I mean, any other community. Any other community. It's well, crazy. Well, these are just recommendations, so there is no Article 78 on that. Okay. On that. Just so, just right, to cover just, the record. But, but, but being, there is consistency, which gives credibility to the board also. Yeah, right. I, you know, that we vote the way we did the first time because we felt that it was improper to den deny somebody from, let's say, you know, they want to redo a building and they knock the building down, but they want to keep, they want to put new apartments up. They can't do it. They can't do it. And, and which, which stops, I, I, which I feel stops the growth. A, a lot of communities' growths are stopped because of that right. rule, law and rules. And I just think that it's, it's uh, uh, I make a motion. Uh, but it, you know. And when you think about it, I mean, that's how most communities are being built because people who have move to. into these apartments want go, the amenities go on look the at bottom. Cove right now. Yeah. Right. You go into town, you have Village Square. It's got all retail on the bottom and apartments. Yeah, I think it's top. the only way to survive. <laughs> you know, yeah. I think it's the only way for these communities to survive. Not even, and I'm not even looking at gonna, it. is working so well right now, but, yeah. you know, eventually it'll come back, it, especially yeah. in downtown. So. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. all right, commissioners, I'll take a motion. I make a motion, NCPC zoning case 751222 to deny um, the application. Seriously. And I'll and I'll second that. And then denial specifically is on the second amendment because unlike most of our referrals, this one had two parts to it. So it's the, the second part having to do right with the stores, uh, and, uh, housing over stores. Okay. All in favor of the denial? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, Marty. Let's go to uh, case number four. Okay. Um, Try to do it quickly, yeah, please. Yeah, I'll, I'll read fast. This is NCPC case number 617122, Town of Hempstead, Hamlet, Woodmere. It's for special exceptions, parking and area slash dimensional variances and fence variance. Um, 
This is a proposed two-story addition to an existing synagogue building off the front rear of the building on lot one, which consists of 24,265 square feet, the size of the lot, that is. And lot, uh, lot two, which fronts on Woodmere Place, consists of 9,200 square feet and is util utilized for parking for the synagogue. Special exception is required for expansion of the religious institution. Special exception is also required to park in, front, uh, park in the residential C district. Minor front yard setback variance is required along Woodmere Place for the small addition in front of the building. The larger addition is to the rear of the building. A parking variance is required with a total of 427 park space required. 21 spaces provided. Uh, the addition includes expansion to the social hall, new storage space, new multi-purpose area, areas, new uh, conference room, new base uh, madrash. Um, the existing main sanctuary accommodates uh, 346 persons will remain. I don't think that's getting uh, increasing in size. The existing building requires 251 spaces. The expansion requires 175 spaces for a total parking requirement of 427 spaces. And again, this is based on the simultaneous use of all functions in the, in the building, uh, which is not going to uh, happen. Uh, to the, to the site, the site is surrounded by homes to the north, east, and west. To the south, across Woodmere Place, is an apartment complex. Uh, to the west of the synagogue, direct uh, build, synagogue building on Woodmere Place is an out parcel occupied by a frame dwelling, beyond which is the parking lot for the synagogue. Um, according to the applicant's attorney, the addition is not expected to increase membership at the congregation. He stated that the neighboring community may uh, make up a large uh, percentage of the congregation, with mu much of the congregation living within a half mile of the synagogue. He also indicated that the expansion will not include a school. He did say, however, that a traffic parking analysis is now being prepared, and when it is completed, it will be forwarded to the Planning Commission. Thus, uh, staff is recommending that uh, that we're going to, that we should require this, this, uh, that deem it incomplete and require this traffic parking analysis as the town isn't going to uh, uh, vote on this until they get that. And I think the commission should have the benefit of that analysis, which we request in a lot of these kinds of cases. So. I mean, honestly, I don't think it's going to really, for us, it's going to make much of a difference. It's going to make no impact. You know, it, it, because it, it, most of the members are, are within a half a yeah. mile. I mean, they're yeah, not going mean, to—they're not going to create no, parking knowing, spaces. Knowing I'm just the trying area to be consistent. Uh, yeah. Mother-in-law down there. Yeah. I'm just so, trying to be show, be, have the commission just be a little, be as much as consistent as possible by by asking that we get this. But you know, you, you make a good point. I mean, this is no different than the one I think we had recently in Plainview, where the where the temple was right in the area, and all the members were members if we're from walking distance so you know the parking analysis although it's being done we yeah. can leave it up to the locals i mean and they're point. not adding okay. parking so there's 427 required and only 21 spaces available that's not changing and it's well the size community. of the congregation they according to the attorney it won't, won't, will not change they're adding space for other other functions um, so it's, it's up to the commission we could commissioners whatever your pleasure is anybody want to make a motion I make a motion that we approve, uh, what is it, uh, NCPC 617-2022. You're asked when you say approve, you mean local determination, oh, yeah. Yeah. correct? 617 oh, I'm sorry, I've been the other one, 122. Um, for local determination. All right, so commissioners, there's a motion on the floor for an LD for NCPHC item 4617222. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Last but not least, Marty. All right, I, this is a zoning case uh, eight. This is NCPC case number 71122, Town of Hempstead, Hamlet of Elmont. Special exceptions, height and parking. Uh, Variances, uh, this is a conversion of a vacant to partial two-story and one-story commercial building. Actually, it was a former <laughs> textile sweater manufacturer, and they want to convert it to a church. Uh, they want to waive parking requirements where 249 spaces are required, zero spaces are provided. 
Um, to the east, of course, Meacham Avenue are homes. To the south is a laundromat, beyond which are homes. To the west is a parking lot fronting on Oakley uh, Avenue. To the north is a shopping center that is surrounded by a town municipal parking lot. Uh, the shopping center doesn't have its own parking, but it, dep it, it is surrounded by municipal parking, which you don't see that often, but the town of Hampstead sometimes does have that. Uh, th there is on street parking on Meacham Avenue and a residential side street. Um, staff is, is recommending uh, additional information uh, be requ is being requested a park, uh, specifically a parking traffic analysis. Uh, also, uh, the site plan, uh, we, we should have information concerning size of the congregation, square footage, square footage associated with various functions within the church building, i.e. congregation area, offices, classroom storage, and any other relevant property information that we didn't get, in addition to the, the parking uh, slash traffic analysis. All right, Marty, in this one, the difference between this one and the last one is very simple. You're going from a two-story commercial building yeah, to now church. having a church. You have That's no cool. information on it, and a parking analysis is just, you know, okay. for us to make a decision. And this, right. is, this is in a high, high traffic area. I mean, right. you're, you're, you know, probably 100 feet from King Umberto's there. There's a shopping center on the corner. This is a massive. Right. And, and the so lot is also used for commuter parking. Yeah, that, right. that, that lot is always is, full. I pass yep. it every day. That lot is, yep. is to capacity. So it's definitely is, full during the day. It serves the shopping center. Yeah, yeah, you know, definitely. So, so th in this case, you are right on target with that because it is a change of what the use is. Right. So, commissioners, I'll take a um, motion. On additional information, I make a motion on uh, case number um, seven one two 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 that the board reserved for uh, additional information. We did. We did. We deem, deem, we would deem it, deem it incomplete. incomplete. There would be the correct motion. Deem it incomplete. I apologize. No, no, it's okay. Don't apologize. The first one of them. <laughs> just, just so you know, it's seven one one two two. Seven one one two two. I'm sorry. Okay. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Is there anything else that we need to discuss? Oh, that's an idea. Everybody sign the attendance. Yep. And the next meeting is on August 11th. August. No. Nope. Everything is current, so there are no open items for the right. commissioners and now. Okay, after you sign everything, motion to adjourn. Don't jump to leave. Mm -hmm. if, if we, we stay here till August 11th if nobody yeah. makes the motion. <laughs> and you stay here without counsel, because I don't have to be here. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> so moved. Yep, just, we have to sign this. Oh, boy. Yep, you're next. You know, at this point, I'm going to leave all these. Do we sign for? They don't realize, at least I don't think they realize. You know, yeah, I really got to You really did. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
good. How are you? <laughs> yeah, right? Damn. Feels strange being here.
I heard the deep water coming into the water. And I went, what was this? And I threw it into the clay barrier. Right. Well, it couldn't go any further. Otherwise, uh, pollution would have gone to hell. Yeah. So there was a clay barrier. And I spent four and a half years cleaning up that place. Testing.
already fucking has.